Hello friends, welcome to Coding Techniques again. Today I'm going to teach you not even one but different kinds of designing in this particular video. So we are going to start off with a custom tab design where I'm going to apply some animation which will look pretty nice and you can just see here how it is looking like okay so after doing that we are going to take our all-in-one delivery application which i have already designed there is a full playlist on that so i'm going to take that and transform that into ionic 7 standalone one and also we are going to apply the latest changes for this swiper one in that particular project and make that a full-fledged project for an ionic 7 one so all these things we are going to cover up in this particular video so let's get started now as you can see here i have created a new project and it is up and running using the command ionic serve now this is a standalone project let me clear you at first if you are using ng module still you can use it pretty easily there won't be any problem so at first what am i going to do since we are going to work only with the tab design at first then we are going to integrate our all-in-one delivery application and transform that into ionic 7 so i'm going to remove this home page by deleting it up all right and i'm going to change the app routing also which can be done by removing this particular one now after doing that i'm going to create a tabs page here for which i'm going to run the command let me just close it ionic g page g for generate and i'm going to name it as tabs let me hit enter and you will see the tabs page is created here but i need another file which you will get if you are using ng module but in standalone one you need to create it up so i'm going to create a new file name it as tabs.routes.ts file okay now in the app.route.ts file i need to change it up so it's gonna be not from load component but from load children in ng module definitely it's gonna be from load children only because there we have the tabs files now what is the problem here all right since we don't have any tab routes anything inside that that is why the error is coming up now in order to fix that in the tabs route ts file i'm going to export the routes in this particular way all right let me import it let me look at the suggestion it is coming up and this is done now there won't be any error here which you can just see right so this is how you can just work with this particular stuff here and you're good to go now it's time to design it up so in the tabs one i'm going to remove all of it because we don't want the basic one instead we need to work with the iron tabs here in this particular way within which we are going to have an iron tab bar and within the tab bar i'm going to have buttons so iron tab button will be there inside of which you can simply pass iron icon or even the label also okay let me just show you by passing one of those so home let's say home still you don't see anything here now for that i'll again go to app.routes.ts file because the redirect to is still home i need to change it to tabs one here once that is done i need to go to tabs route.ts file and need to pass here something and that's gonna be the default route things so this tab page i need to import it so this will be the default route that will be coming up here once that is done you will see the home page home tab button is showing up correct so this is how it works now i'll simply go again back to the html part of the tabs page and design it up in iron tabs i want to detect whenever the tab is changing i want to do something regarding that so i will have an identifier called tabs here and an event iron tabs did change where i'm going to call this particular function along with the event for doing so i need to go to the ts file this particular one and work with that so i don't need any forms module here common module is required for ng if and other stuff okay in ng module you don't need to make any changes here now i'll create that particular function in this particular manner okay now error is gone and i'm going to have here the selected tab so which one will be the selected tab here this dot selected tab will be equals to event dot tab because that's the only thing it is going to throw that's it which will have the value of this particular tab which we have here okay i haven't passed it we need to pass here a tab attribute first one let's call it home now if i click on it i must be getting an error here let's check it out just check this out we are getting an error because there is no route called home 
because this tab will redirect to home. So in order to do that or in order to work with that, I need to create some more pages within our tabs one. So Ionic G page within the tabs one and I'm going to call it home at first. Okay. Similarly, I'll have few more pages like search one, then orders, let's say wallet and final one will be the menu one. All right. So this five I have created within the tabs one. So in the tabs routing, it's going to show up, but I don't want to show it in this particular manner. In fact, I need to make children of my tabs page in this way. Okay. And I need to remove all this within that. So this particular stuff, this particular objects up till the last one, I need to move it within the children. It's done. Now it's good to go. Just one final thing is left, which is a default route redirect to this particular one. And I need to pass it everywhere. So that even after this particular object also. All right. So now the default route will be slash tab slash home. So home will be the default route, which you can just see here by default home is showing up. That's great. Now I need to get back to the HTML again and need to create the tabs one for each and every one, but I need to have a label also. So I am label and let me pass it as home here. Okay. So you can see the label is showing up. Similarly, I'll just copy this tab button and paste it many times in this way. The second one will be the search one and it will have a search icon tab will be search. Third one will be the order one orders. Then let me have the icon to be bag and this will be orders. Similarly, I'll just do for the other ones also wallet icon card and this one will be wallet. Final one will be the menu or I think we can pass account one also, but we need to have the route in the same manner. So I think I have just passed it menu here. Yes, the menu one. That is why I'm doing that. So the icon name will also be menu here. Fine. So now you can see this is showing up and if I click on it, this is working. That's great. Now what I actually need to do here, I need to design it in a custom way. So first of all, for each and every tab button, I need to have another attribute called layout icon starts because I want the icon to be at the start one. Okay. Not at the top. So let's do that for each and every one. It's done, right? Okay. Now let me make each and every icon to be home outline. So everyone should be outlined because this is looking too bold, which I don't want. So let's do it in this manner here. All right. So this is done. Now I want to show this label only if this particular tab is selected. Otherwise I'm not going to show it. So I'm going to pass a condition here that ng if selected tab is equals to equals to home in this case, because the tab name is home here. And this particular name should come for this particular page here because the page name is home, right? That is why I hope you're getting it. That is how we are doing this particular stuff. Now you see there is no home here, the label one, and it will only show if I just select this particular one. Let's do that for each and every one here. So I'm just going to copy this stuff and paste it everywhere. Don't worry. I need to change the name. I'll just do it after pasting it up. Okay. Let's change it everywhere. Menu wallet orders and this one will be search. Fine. Everyone is done now. If you click on it, it's going to work as expected, right? So we are halfway down. Now let's design it up for which I'll go to the CSS file here and work with the iron tabs. So I'm just going to change the background color for our tab bar to be the white color. And we don't have the white color as of now. So we need to create one for which I have to go to the themes variable.scss file, scroll down till here and hit enter and paste it. Okay. Because I already have this particular color created. So this is how my white color will show up. And if you don't want to pass this particular stuff, that directly what you can do here directly instead of this, you can pass white. That's the way you can have the white color also if you want to. Okay. So this is what I have done and this is very important to be passed. Otherwise this will not work. So after doing so, let's get back to the SCSS file here and look at the other stuff. So whenever a tab button is there, the default color will be the medium color, which you can just see here. These are the default colors. And the selected one will have the white color one. 
So the icon and the label will have the white color stuff, which, which is why you cannot see anything here. If I just click on this particular one, you will see that this is showing up and this is gone because we have passed the white color here. If I pass the primary color, you will be able to see that. Okay, now you would see it is visible here. So let me just keep it as white color because I want to give some designing to this particular stuff. That is why I'm doing that. And I have changed the icon size to be 1.5 REM. That's the only thing I've done here. Now, once again, I'll go to the HTML and play with the designing here. So I'll have an NG class here where I'm going to work with a class called selected. It will be passed only if this condition is satisfied. That means selected tab equals to equals to home. Then only it's going to be applied on this particular tab button. Otherwise, you won't see that. Let's do the same here also. You'll just need to change this to search. And similarly for the other ones also, I need to do the same thing. All right. This is going to be orders, wallet. All right. Final one will be the menu one. So let's just pass it and it's done. Okay. So once that is done, I need to create that particular class in our SCSS. So I'm going just going to click have that particular class here in which I'm just giving a background color to be the primary one and a border radius of one pixel solid and medium color. And again, a border radius has been given just to make it round shaped. Then a padding of five pixel horizontally and a margin of five pixel horizontally, not in top and bottom part. But still, this is not the final thing which I want to apply. I need to work with the iron label and icon also. So for the iron label, I'm just going to have a font size of one REM, font weight of 600 and a margin top of five pixel here. For the iron icon, I'm just having minimum width of zero and a font size of one REM. Now minimum width to zero is being done because I want to play around with the size here. Otherwise, if I just don't pass it, the size won't change. Okay. That is why we need to pass minimum width to be zero here. You can even pass a box shadow here. So this is the box shadow which I'm going to apply. So this is horizontal offset. This is vertical offset. This is the blur, how much blur I want. And this is like how much I want to spread that particular color. And finally, which one is the color, which you can just see here. Now you see just a slight shadow is being shown. That's looking great. But still the job is not yet done. Because for Android and iOS, the design is going to be different. Let me just show you for Android one. This is the one. Let's refresh it. Now you see here, there is some spacing between the two, but that was not the case in iOS. So I need to apply something for Android and iOS to have the same design. And in order to do that, what am I going to do? I will have here in this particular manner, the same selected tab, but within iOS, it's going to be different for Android. It's going to be different. And I'm going to work around with this selected tab button height, which you can just see here. The height is changed and I'm passing an iron label margin left of 10 pixels, which you can see here. Now we have a proper sizing for, sorry, this is for the Android one, five pixel margin left and a height of 4.5 VH, which is for this particular one. That is why this rounded shape is looking great. Otherwise it was taking the full size. Now let's get back to our iOS one and check it out. So this is the iOS one, which you can just see here and it's looking lovely, right? In fact, you can increase the size of the iron icon if you want. I'll just give 1.2 REM, but I think the smaller one is fine. So one REM is fine for me. And for the iron label, I have given some margin top just to align it properly. I think three pixel will be better. Okay. Now it is looking more centered up. You can play around with the centering alignment or other thing, but I don't think that's worked properly. That is why I've given just this margin thing. Now again, this one is also, I think fine. I think you can remove this margin here, margin top then it will look better for the Android one. So what am I going to do? I'll copy this particular stuff here. Okay. And for the iOS one, I'm just going to pass it not in the Android one. So in this particular way, the Android one will remain intact. And for the iOS, I will have a design in which there will be some margin top for the iron label here. All right. So this is the design which I was looking for. And just look at this. If I click here, just look at the design. This is looking great, right? If you want to just work around with the box shadow, definitely you can work with that. The blur effect, well, you can just reduce it. Let me give two pixels and spreading also two pixel, but that's not looking that great, right? So let me just change it back to three and four value. And in fact, 
opacity again you can reduce it to 0.2 i think so i think this one is fine the shadow is not that visible but still it's looking fine all right so i think 0.15 is good let's keep it in this way but still the work is not done we still need to do something with this particular stuff here i am talking about the animation part because the designing is done now just need to work around with the animation here so let me just show you how we can work around with the animation i'll just work with the ts file here now in order to work around with the animation i need to inject not here in the constructor animation controller okay so i've just imported it fine once that is done i need to get an identifier for this particular tab button so in this particular way using the document query selector within that i'll just pass the tab button iron tab button and within that the selected tab i'm going to pass in this particular way so that this particular one gets selected now i'm going to create a fade animation here so fade in animation where it's going to be ease in and out okay if you want opacity changing from 0 to 1 definitely you can work with that but i want easing in and out animation here to be passed and the duration of 300 milliseconds it's going to be better and the html element i'm going to pass it you can make it private or you can just remove it uh, this is absolutely up to you because we are not going to use it anywhere else so private is fine so this is the animation which we are going to work with which is created with the help of our animation controller here this is how we create it now using this particular animation what am i going to do i'm going to create a constant call fade in animation in which i'm going to pass this particular animation and within the tab button which will be passed as html element otherwise this is going to give us an error now after this is done i just need to play this particular animation using the play function okay still you don't see any changes here right so if i just click here you hardly see any changes right now let's work with this particular opacity one and if i click on home you just see it is getting changed some animation is applied which is because of this particular opacity one now if i don't pass this play function let's see what happens if i click here you see no animation is being passed now as you have seen that this play function is very much important and i have just commented this opacity one and working with the ease in out but only working with ease in out won't help i need to pass some keyframes here which is basically this particular one where i need to pass offset to be zero means how much it's going to bounce and the scale is given here which is related to the bouncing one so zero to one offset within which we can play around so if it is halfway down it's going to scale to 1.2 and again come back to one so if you're confused how this is being done let me just show you if i just click here you will see the changes if i just click on the home page you see it is bouncing and getting back to the same one once again okay so it is actually giving a bouncing effect and it is easy in out right so this is how this is being done and this animation is looking great according to me so you can work around with the animation stuff you can just check the animation controller in ionic framework and experiment with that a lot so i've just tried few simple animations which is working great here all right so this is the custom tab design which i wanted to show you i hope you liked it now let's jump to our all in one delivery application so in order to work with that i will open up the browser in which this is the url which is available on github which is related to our all in one delivery application that we created with ionic 6 now i'm going to change it for ionic 7 so let's download the code here for the screens do we need the screens no i don't think so but we need some of the stuffs from there so this is the code which i have just opened it up within which i just need to get the assets one so i'll just copy the assets and this is our project assets folder where i'm going to paste it once that is done i'll close everything the next thing i'm going to work around directly into our src folder and work around with the component and other stuff so let's work with the pages at first i'm going to start off with the home page here or let's leave the home page let's go to wallet one let's design the wallet one here quickly so copy all and i'm going to paste it to my wallet one in this way having certain errors don't need to worry let's get back to the scss file and copy everything then i'm going to paste that also to our wallet page scss okay finally the ts file let's copy this particular one and go to ts file paste it here this is the array that i need to declare it here that's it 
Now there is no requirement of forms module, so I'll remove it from the wallet one also. Okay, you don't need to do it in ng module. Let me clear you that. So wallet is done. Now I'll go to the account one, which is in case our menu one. Let's copy everything, get back and into the menu one. So I've copied from the account one HTML and I'm going to paste it here. The next thing SCSS. So I'm just doing one by one each and every stuff so that you understand how exactly I'm changing it. Okay. Because we don't need to make any more changes directly. You can copy it if you're using ng module, the whole stuff here. Okay. That's going to be great for you. But since we are into the standalone one, that is why I'm doing it one by one. Let's copy this things only and I'm going to paste it in the menu one and I'm going to replace this particular stuff here and it's good to go. So if you just go to the menu screen, you will be able to see that and in the wallet one also you can see that don't worry about the colors. We are going to work with the theming one also, but at least first clear up all the stuff. Okay. Now in the orders one, what do we have? So I count one is done. Then the orders one. So it's TML part again, copy it, get back to the orders one and paste it here. The CSS copy it, paste it here. Nothing in the TS file. So this is done. If I just check the orders one now, you can see this is showing up. That's great. Now the search page, go to HTML and copy everything. Simply paste it, CSS, copy and paste. Finally, the TS file, you need to copy each and every stuff here till the bottom and paste it in the TS file here in this particular way. Now remember to remove the forms module wherever it's not in use. I don't think it's in use anywhere here. So I'm just going to remove it from the orders one also. All right. Just in ng, just in standalone one, you need to do this stuff nowhere else. Still, we have an error here. So what's the error going to be empty screen. All right. We need to have the component also in order to have that. We will work around with that right now. First of all, let's fix this particular stuff here. Why this is showing me an error because I need to give it not symbol as I'm not passing TS config strict to be false. If you pass strict to be false, you won't find that those errors. All right. Any more error here? Let me give it of type any. Okay. They are also of type any. Fine. The errors are gone. Now in this particular one, I need to remove this question mark. Well, if you pass that strict to be false, you don't need to do any changes here, but still since we have not done that, we need to work around with this particular stuff here. For the empty screen, what am I going to do? This was our code, right? So within the code, we have this components folder within which we only have the empty screen one. So let me copy this particular one or let me copy the whole stuff here. This particular stuff, the components folder, and I'm going to have it into this particular app one. So open it in finder and let me paste it here directly. Okay. Once that is done, what am I going to do? I'm going to work around with that. Remove this components module here because I don't need that. Remember, it needs to be done only in standalone one. In ng module, you need that particular file and you need, you need to do the same way as it is shown in the search page. Let me just show you here. So I think this was the code, right? So in the pages one, in the tabs one, you will find the search page module file. You need to copy that module file also into your search module. If you have that in ng module one, remember that because it will have the components module imported. In our case, we don't need that. That is why I'm just not working with that particular modules one. Now, in order to get rid of the error, what I need exactly need to do here, I need to pass standalone to be true and I need to import the ionic module here. All right. So once that is done, the error from here will go because these are ionic tags and this particular one, just a not symbol. Will this work? Okay. I need to just pass the type here. I'm just giving a type of any, or this will be a string here. What's wrong? No initializer. Let's a not symbol will work. Okay. So the error is gone from here. And in order to work with this particular stuff, only in the standalone one, what I exactly need to do is in the imports one, I need to import the empty component also because this is standalone. Again, I'm telling the same stuff. Don't need to do anything if you are working with the ng module one. This things needs to be done for the standalone one only. And you need to pass standalone to true only if you're using the standalone one. Okay. So except home, everything is done. Now in the home page, what am I going to do? Let's check this out. So home page HTML, 
let me copy this whole stuff here and I'm going to paste it in the home page HTML. All right. Along with that, the CSS also. Let's copy and paste it. Once that is done, the TS file, let's copy everything. All right. And paste it in this particular way. Okay. So now with Ionic 6, what Swiper version we were using was different. Okay. So I will remove this particular stuff here, the banners one, because I'm going to do that in a different way here. Okay. Apart from that, even if I don't need this ng after content checked one, apart from that, we everything will be same. So let me just comment this particular stuff here. Now this will show up. If I go to the home page here, this will show up, but the banner one will not show. So I need to work around with the banner one. Don't need to worry about it. I'll just show you how exactly that needs to be done. Rest of the things will remain the same. And you can do one more thing here. Let's check it for the Android one. If I just go for the Android one here, let's refresh it. This is not showing up nicely. Okay. In order to fix that, what I need to do, let me just pass mode of this toolbar to be iOS one only. Okay. If that is passed again, if I just go to the Android one, let's check it out. It is the same stuff only. Okay. So this is how you can work around with this particular stuff. Let's get back to the iPhone design and it's time to work with the theming at first. So let's apply the theming here. What I exactly need to do. Let's check it out here. What theming do we have at the earlier point? Do we have anything in the global.scss? Well, nothing. This swiper is not needed. Now in the variables.scss, let me copy this particular ones. Okay. There is white color also defined. So I'll just copy the whole stuff here. In fact, directly I'll copy it. Okay. And I'm going to paste it here. Everything. Once that is done, we will see the change in the design, right? So this is looking great, isn't it? Everything is getting changed. If I just search for CR, hit enter. You need to hit enter here in order to show this particular stuff because in the search one, I think ion change is being used. Yes. Instead of that, if you use ion input, then you don't need to, well, hit the enter button. Okay. If I just type CR, it will come up automatically. So this is how you can change it particular stuff here. Hope it's clear to you as of now. The last thing is we need to work around with the component called banners because I need, I'll be using the particular component here. So Ionic G component within the components folder, and I'm going to name it as banner. Okay. This will be created now. And within this, we are going to work around with this particular banner design. So this banners will be coming from our, so in the banner.ts file, I'll make it standalone at first in this particular way and need to import what all things. So the, in the imports and in the schemes one, we need this particular stuff to work around with the swiper one. So let me import everything one by one. The ones that is imported, what's wrong here? This is not imported properly. Okay. Now this will be imported. I have done something wrong earlier. Not to worry. So we need to install swiper also. So npm i swiper there's the latest version that's going to be installed once that is done everything is good to go now let's move to the home page here in the home page what am i going to do i'm going to go to the ts file and instead of the forms one which we don't need here i'll simply have banner component imported once that is done in the html we can simply pass the banners one directly in this particular way here let me just show you properly. You don't need to pass this condition or I think it's fine. What's wrong here in the TS file? We have everything. We have the banners one. It is working here, right? We just need to pass this banner images into our uh, banner component. Other things are fine. This is fine. The question mark, I can remove it. So it's time to work around with the banner component in which I'm going to have this particular stuff. So swiper modules will be imported in this particular way. And if you are not sure, I have already made a video on this particular one. You can simply check this out. This will be of type any here. And I'll give a not symbol. Import this input one. And that's it. The errors are gone. In the HTML now, I'll simply work around with this particular stuff. So I'll just have an iron row here. Okay. Where I will have a border bottom class. And let me remove this condition here. We don't need that. And within the iron row, I'll work around with a div. 
within which I'll have this swiper container in this particular way. Now to this particular swiper container, I'm just going to pass some few stuff. So slides per view, that's gonna be, let me pass initial slide to be one because it starts from zero. So I want the second slide to be showing at first, okay? Space between each slide will be 20, slides per view will be 1.2. Center slides will be done. All slides will be centered up. And this is the pagination which I've applied. So these are the things which we have done. Now, in order to work around with this slides one, I need to do something in the app.component.ts file. So in the app.component.ts file, I need to pass this particular stuff, this particular import register function from swiper element bundle. So once I do that, this swiper one will be registered and it can be used anywhere else. You don't need to pass this import anywhere else. Okay. Now I'll get back to the component. And now it's time to work with the swiper slide within the swiper container in this particular way. So I've just, I'm, I'll just loop it up. And within this particular one, I'm going to have an image. All right. So as you can see, something is wrong here. All right. Basically the sizing one is not great. That is why you are not able to see anything. It is taking the whole size. So I need to work around with the SCSS here in order to show the proper design. So let me work with the div at first. I'm going to have transformation from y direction, little bit spacing at the top. Height is fixed to 25 VH, width is 100% and margin to be auto. Okay. Now after that, I need to work with the swiper container to pass the pagination bullet that will show up the color of that. The inactive ones, I'll have the medium color and the active ones, I will have the primary color. Let me just show you in this particular way. Now the main thing comes within the swiper container where we are going to work around with the height of weight. So I'm just fixing the height to 22 VH and within the swiper slide, I'll work around with the image one where I will have the width and height. I think height to be not 16 exactly. Let's give it 20 or 18 will be better. Okay. And finally the border radius of five pixel will be looking nice. So this is a design which is up and ready now, which you can see here, right? So this is how the slides are working, looking great, four slides. Then you have the search one, orders one, wallet one, and the menu one. So everything is looking great. So we have optimized and converted the all-in-one delivery application to the latest version of Ionic along with that the custom tabs one also. All right, friends, you have seen how we have actually designed the custom tabs and all the other stuff for our all-in-one delivery application to make it compatible with Ionic 7. So with this, I'll wrap up this lecture here. Thank you so much for watching us. And before going, if you haven't checked my courses yet, do check it out. Links are there in the description. So with this, I'll wrap up here and I'm going to see you next time.